You mentioned transparency a couple of times under budget and financial management, and I was glad to hear that. I've always felt, and uh, this is just me, that we should in the end aim to have budget information on our website in a way that the a lay person who's not an accountant or schooled in the intricacies of district finance can go online and get a pretty good clear sense of where we spend money and what on. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Anything else from the board on this information? Thank you very much. All right. We go on to action items. First, superintendent performance pay. Let me give just a little bit of background on this. When we hired uh, Dr. Pentacone, we set forth a series of goals for the first six months. Um, goals for six months is pretty brief, but we're required by statute to do that because statute at that time, it's now changed, but at that time required a very substantial amount of the superintendent's compensation to be withheld and performance based. So we had to adopt those goals and we have just um, been through a process where the board members evaluated uh, the superintendent's performance on a scale of zero to 100 and we aggregated all of that into an overall um, performance score. Uh, Dr. Pentecost, do you want to say anything else about background or I can open up the board? Well, I, I think just that I appreciate the process that we engaged in um, to determine uh, not only my own performance, but, but help guide me in terms of the way in which I'm going to approach uh, future work. So I, I think the process was, was healthy and uh, I appreciate the effort. Right, it was difficult uh, in the six month, you know, just a six month period. Board members, concerns? Um, Dr. Segman, I, uh, I'd like to go ahead with a motion um, to, and I don't, I, I'm not sure the wording of this, but to um, say that we found um, the evaluation what we did was we averaged our scores. We all scored the superintendent and the average score was uh, at 83%, which is um, comes out to $30,650, which we were, that's for half a year, which we were required to hold out by the statute, state statute. It's not bonus money. I want to make it very clear. It was part of the um, contract agreement that the state required us to hold out 20% of both salary and benefits. Is that correct for the first year? And I think certain benefits. Certain benefits. Um, and I'd like to move that we uh, award that performance pay to um, Dr. Pettico. Here a second. I'll second. Uh, further discussion by the board? I, I just want to clarify that this is part of the, the contract that we signed with the superintendent. It's 20% of that contract. It's not a bonus in addition to. I just want to make that really clear because this is a process that we had to do as a requirement of the state. Yes, the group that state required us to set aside 20% and that won't be, that isn't true in the future because we were actually the first school district, first major school district that signed a contract under that statute. And as other districts approached that process, they felt it was too high and the legislature has revised that down. So although we are going to be required to award bonus 
uh, to have a performance component in the future, it won't be that large. Further uh, comment or discussion from the board on this item? Uh, all in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes 5-0. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Pedico. I didn't. And I and I knew that this was going to be coming, and I and I um, we haven't really discussed this at length. But uh, after consideration and in view of the fact that uh, our situation this year with employees receiving a three percent increase, um, the first time that they've received any kind of raise in four years, um, it's my decision to donate the performance pay that uh, I've just been awarded back to the district. I, I don't feel it would be appropriate to accept it. Um, in view of uh, the condition that we find ourselves in. And I do appreciate, however, the, the board's work to, um, I think evaluation is extremely important. I take it seriously with the people that I supervise, and I appreciate the board's efforts to do that. Um, it, as I said from the very beginning of my time with you, this is really about trying to work well with this board and this community to do what I believe is right and try to help benefit this community. So I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that award. I will figure out with our legal team how to donate this back to the district so that uh, I will not accept the, uh, the award at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any, uh, does any board member want to comment on that or are we anything else on that item? All right. Applause was the comment. All right, item eight, election of officers. Ms. Burns, I think this is your item. Actually, I put it on for other board members that requested it of me, so. Um, Can I open it up to the board? Item eight? Item, uh, yeah, actually, I, I should have said, um, the published agenda had item eight, and that was subsequently divided into A and B, board president, board clerk, so I guess we're not sure. Yes, Ms. Grahalva. Um, I am a board member that approached Ms. Burns to put this item on the agenda. Um, this is an item that was brought forward, I want to say about a month and a half ago, and never received a second. Um, this, we've had some issues um, with the current leadership. We've talked about it several times, I believe three times in the last eight months, and at that time, I didn't vote to second the item because we were going to be addressing some issues during the retreat that unfortunately really didn't pan out the way any of us thought that it would. Um, I have noticed in the last eight months an increasingly um, difficult environment to come out to at these board meetings. Um, there have been some procedural changes that have caused a lot of distress to our community. There is um, a seeming inability or unwillingness to see and be able to read the group in this room. And I don't feel that the board president has any authority that any of the other five of us don't have, other than the fact that it's, it's a privilege that a majority of the board gives the person who's sitting as board president, they vote you in to essentially run meetings. And, um, there, in my opinion, has been an abuse of the position. There have been um, special meetings called without anybody knowing about them other than the president. The superintendent didn't know about it. It didn't come to the agenda committee. Um, there have been some directions that our current leadership have taken that I don't support. And so I would like to move um, that we, re that we have a replacement of the current governing board president um, to make it work. I'll second. Discussion from the board. Is, Mr. Hicks? This, is this going to be a roll call vote? Uh, you can request it. That's I'd, I'd like to request a roll call vote. Any other uh, discussion from the board? Uh, Dr. Sagerman? Mr. Hall. I would like to say that regardless of whether this item um, is successful or not, that I would like to reestablish the leadership team meetings 
which is something that we had historically in this board with the president and the clerk and the superintendent. And so the board president isn't the only one that is um, touching base with the superintendent or giving any kind of um, guidance. This is something that we've done in our district for some time and I really feel that it's something that, that it, with this current, <laughs> this current five member board, one person can never represent the majority of this board in any given item. And so I think that it's just safer to have two people that are there so at least the superintendent can say, I met with the leadership team. Um, the other thing that I would like to request is all special meetings, all agendas will be set and approved and created with the leadership team, including the superintendent. So during the agenda committees, I think that's something that would ensure that um, we continue <coughs> to feel like the direction that we're going in as a district is something that the majority of the board wants. I also want to remind the board members that during our retreat, um, Pantilo Contreras talked to us about the fact that the tone that is set by the board members is the tone that we have as a district. And I really would like to see these board meetings and the tone of this board be much more civil, much more cooperative, much more open communication and much more of a thing that we remember that we're representing a school district of children that are students that are under 18 and that if when we have these meetings that the people that come to speak to these meetings remember that if your children or grandchildren were sitting in the audience you would want them to hear the kind of information that's coming here. I mean it's something that we've we've lost and we need to regain. Other I wasn't going to speak on this item. I'll make a couple of quick points in response to Ms. Grijalva's remarks. We have once a, once a month, generally, one-on-one -on -one meetings between a superintendent and each board member. Um, and that institution has operated this year, as far as I know exactly, as it has in the past. And that meeting is no longer for the board president than for anyone else. It's typically an hour and a half for every member of the board. And that's been exactly the same as in the past. As far as I know, there's just one uh, special meeting that we've held, and the purpose of that meeting was to make an appointment which was accidentally omitted from the regular agenda. It was about a 10 minute meeting. Anything else? All right then, Sylvia, call the roll. Ms. Grijalva? Yes. Mr. Hicks? Before I make my vote, I have a thing I want to read, and it's entitled For the Kids. <laughs> Under the guise of working for kids during the course of your governance over the Tucson Unified School District, the district has lost students, millions of dollars, and the public's trust. For the kids, you have overseen the loss of $1.9 million due to providing too little instruction time to our kids. For the kids, you have overseen the misuse of over $3 million in Title I monies intended for our most disadvantaged community kids. For our kids, you have overseen the inappropriate spending of four, $4 million intended to upgrade technology in our schools for our community's kids. For our kids, you have overseen the reduction in our bond rating, making it difficult to improve our facilities for our community kids. For our kids, you have overseen the closure of many neighborhood schools. For our kids, you have overseen the steady decline of the community support for our schools and for our community kids. For these kids, I would just like to thank you, Ms. Burns and Ms. Grijalva, for your stellar leadership during your tenure. With that, I vote no. Thank you, Stegman. That was proper to do under discussion. It was not proper to do under our voting. Um, and, and I don't care that he did it, but when we get to voting, we vote. We don't have discussion. Discussion is over. Yes, that's generally what we do, but there has been precedent for board members making remarks before they vote. It's unusual, but it's not unprecedented. I have okay. never heard it done before Mr. Hicks was on this board. Dr. Stegman, but it has been done. All right. Uh, I, I think uh, we can continue with the roll. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Cuevas? Yes. Dr. Stegman? No.
seat themselves, we can continue. Item 8B, uh, board clerk, I open this up to the board. Dr. Sagan. Mr. Hicks. I'd like to uh, make the recommendation that we remove our, our sitting mic or, or replace our clerk. With whom? And I'll take the doc and I suggest Dr. Stegman. There's a motion on the floor to replace uh, Ms. Burns as clerk with me. Do I hear a second? Burn. Motion dies for lack of a second. Discussion on this item. All right, then. Uh, well, let's take a quick five minute recess. Yeah, Miguel, uh, you, you just basically cast the deciding vote to put yourself into the presidency. What was going through your mind? Why did you do so? I think it's important that the governing board um, has a leader that represents at least the majority of the board. And as most members of the public know, I have been a swing board member on some issues. And I think it's important that now we bring in someone who can build consensus and not polarize this board in this community. Will that be difficult coming out of um, what we've been through the past six months? And obviously a lot of community members have their very they're very polarized right now and have definite um, opinions on what they want the board to do. Some definitely want to see ethnic studies continue, others say it should end. Is that going to make consensus difficult? Well, I think at this point it's very clear that the board is divided and this community is divided. And I believe that we need to work together and I think that's about relationship building and also meeting and being open with the public. And at this point I, it's going to be a very difficult task to do this, however I think it can be accomplished. And how do you go about building consensus with this divided group? Well, as already an individual governing board member, I meet with every single board member at least once or twice a month. I'm one of the few board members that, that does that. And so at this point, I already have established relationships, and I'll continue to work on those relationships with the individual board members. What Is about ethnic studies the with Stegman? How is that going to work with you and Mark working together now after basically a coup? As far as I'm concerned, Dr. Stegman and I are going to work. You know, he has his heart's in the right place. I think he's here for students. However, unfortunately, the timing was bad for Dr. Stegman, and I believe that at this point he has become a polarizing figure and not able to build consensus with the board and the community. Is ethnic studies the most polarizing issue on the table? What else are you facing that uh, divides the board? I think there's several issues. As a large urban school district, we are hit with ethnic studies, um, labor issues, economic issues, school closure issues that we need to continue to work on together as a board. Do you think some of those whom you've been working with are prepared to not get what they want? I, at this point, I'm not going to comment to that. What I would hope is that they're willing and able to work for the students. How big of an issue is uh, examining the DSEG budget going to be at this point? I think that the desegregation budget's a huge issue that I will take into account all board members' um, perspectives and also the community's perspective in order to bring transparency and consensus building to this district. And when do you officially take over? How does that work from here? Immediately. I, I take over the presidency immediately. Did you agree with that Alita's call to have both what you, the clerk, and the superintendent start meeting again like that, a leadership? Um, committee. I think it's important that we do have a leadership committee and that we start to provide direction and we actually finally return to talking about student achievement. A lot of the focus has been on the conduct of, of what's happening in the meetings themselves, um, how the audience is behaving and what the president has done to control that. Do you feel you're prepared for, for any unexpected events and how, how will you handle those? Well, I think that at this point, the tone has been set for the governing board and how the meetings are functioned. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but I believe I have the leadership skills and also the development and training in order to properly manage the, the board meetings and help provide consensus. 
Thanks. Okay, let's go. I'd better talk to press media. You want to you wanna go back around there? Right. You okay with that? What? Are you okay with that? If we get in on this? No, I'd rather just talk to, well... Kind of a favoritism type of person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about one person. Yeah. Um, all right, that's fine. That's fine. Well, I'm entitled. I'm entitled to favoritism. Yeah, you are. I think, that, I think that's all right. Sorry, Alexis. I don't know if I want to go. Yeah. Mark, can you give us your thoughts on what just went down here? I think we need to spend more time talking about the issues that affect schools and affect education. And, uh, I hope we can move on and spend more time talking about those things. They're, one of the problems in TUSD's culture is too much discussion of personalities, um, too much stuff going on inside 1010 that doesn't much affect education. Will the board still be able to accomplish you know, the, the issues that face it after this? Oh, I assume so. I'm, I'm sure so. It's The presidency is not an important position as equal vote. It has something to do with setting the agenda and something to do with conducting meetings. And I don't think it changes uh, the board's direction very much. Would you prefer to still be president then? I voted no. I thought it was bad practice to bring the same item back within two months, but it's, it's not a disaster. I think it was, I think there was a, an unstated issue here, which was the ethnic studies issue, which has plagued the board all year, and I think one of the unstated issues in this vote was a split on the board over that issue. So it won't change your direction and your focus on what your job is no, of course not. I'm here to try to make the district better. I think we are getting better incrementally, and I expect that to continue. Do you feel hurt by being removed? No, this isn't a personal business. It's, it's, um, uh, it was the board's decision. Again, I, I, disag I disagreed with bringing the same item back so quickly, and I would have disagreed with that regardless who was in the leadership. I would not have voted for that. But it's not worth exaggerating it. Uh, I had served eight months of the term anyway. So I, I um, there are a lot of cameras here, but in some sense, this is one of the least important issues we've dealt with. And I wish we could get media attention on the decisions that we make that actually have a big impact on schools. So you should come back for that stuff. Uh, what are some of those issues that are coming up? What, what big issues are you going to be deciding in the, the next few months? Well, unfortunately, we'll be... We're still mired in the ethnic studies issue. We'll be making issues on that too, but um, we'll be making school decisions on strategic site planning in the next few months. We're always in the process of trying to improve our budget. You know how we revise our budget allocation, and uh, we're always uh, we're in an ongoing process with um, one of our unions to try to repair relations after some difficulties. So there are lots of things coming up, and there will always be lots of things coming up. Mr. Cueva said you'd become a polarizing figure in this throughout your presidency as a result of Mexican-American studies. I mean, do you feel that's as a result of anything you've done, or it's just the timing in general? I try very hard not to criticize any other board member and not to criticize the superintendent. Um, I think the board, I would say the board is polarized on this issue, but I, I would not myself uh, characterize any particular board member as polarizing. The board is split. I brought a proposal forward in the spring, which obviously caused a lot of controversy. Um, Mr. Hicks and I co-sponsored that proposal. I brought that proposal forward because it seemed like at the time it had a good chance of attracting three votes. I would not have otherwise done it. I thought that passing that proposal would help to move the district forward. Uh, since we didn't pass it, obviously it was an effort that, that didn't succeed. Um, and I think bringing that proposal forward did cause a lot of controversy, but the proposal itself was moderate. And um, the, what I regret about that is that we brought it forward and weren't able to get it through. I mean, I wouldn't have brought it forward if I didn't think we could get it through, but then in the end we didn't get it through, and that obviously did cause a lot of trouble for the district. Um, but the proposal itself was not a proposal. Could you have done things better? 
Well, if I had known in advance that we, as I say, I brought that proposal forward. I just meant generally, you know, some of the disagreements. Oh, well, there's always things to do better. I mean, uh, yes, I think the May 3rd meeting, we all agreed with something could be handled better. We uh, planned for it, and we actually executed our plan for that meeting. But I think uh, in the end, we wish we had a different plan or hadn't uh, had Advised what we were doing so we didn't get the seven arrests. I don't think anyone was happy with that outcome. It was a very challenging meeting environment. I don't think TUSD sees any, has seen anything like that uh, for a long time. And um, I guess I'm sorry we didn't do it better, but since we hadn't been through it before, it's not surprising we didn't get everything right the first time. Do you feel you abused your power as president in any way? No, the presidency, by board policy, the president has the authority to regulate meetings and to regulate the call of the audience. And so I don't think, I certainly don't think I abused that power. I never went beyond what board policy allows me to do. I mean, not that I'm aware of. I think that's quite clear. I, I never went beyond what uh, board policy allows me to do. Good it's a battle won. It's a, we, we have a victory, a uh, small victory, but we'll take any victories right now. You know, obviously, uh, Dr. Stegman was not doing uh, a good job, to say the least, and uh, fortunately, we had the majority, except for one, agree uh, that he needed to be replaced. And so it's, a, it's, it's one small victory. We still have a huge battle to go for, but you, you can see that uh, uh, folks there, the majority were really what, 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 what specifically was uh, problematic? Well, you know, Stegman continued to fundamentally um, fail as a president. I think Adelita Vijalba really was very articulate on that point, basically saying that there is no difference between board, the board president and other board members, except for that you have to at least run a proper meeting. And Dr. Stegman was not doing that. Not only was he not running proper meetings, he was actually really, really tone deaf, you know, he really did not recognize um, the dynamics of the, of the public and did not use proper judgment. Uh, I personally feel that he was actually being very hostile, specifically uh, about uh, uh, ethnic studies in general, uh, but uh, really any board president, any mayor, anyone who's in charge of a governing body um, uh, would know better than, uh, than the choices that he made. So I was really happy to see, at the very least, we'll have uh, give it, uh, uh, someone else a chance to run proper meetings. TucsonSentinel.com, we are watching Tucson.